vacation, Lori Kilmartin. Are we ready? We are. It's been a technological 10 minutes. Yeah, my iMac, uh, all of a sudden it's not showing my face. This was just the same thing that happened to Aaron Jackson on our show. Like, yeah. And Helen Honk for a second blacked out on a on an act on some show we did last week so i it might be a zoom a, an upcoming zoom disaster for comedians <laughs> just beware maybe your video is not going to show up so i switched over to my ipad and now i'm laying on my bed this isn't my normal <laughs> that is not the, this is not usually the vibe it's She's all very smiling. hard for me to be angry when i'm laying on my tummy <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of bummed it's tummy anger this is tummy <laughs> tummy time for comedy <laughs> uh, that's what they they always have you tummy time uh yeah i uh i've done many shows this week and some of them were good and some of them were not correct same mm -hmm. uh-huh a bit of a mess <laughs> and i was like oh well how reassuring that people can fuck up uh a Zoom show just as bad as any other weird showcase show that's happening in real life with people that's sitting in front of you. Why? Why don't we all? Are, why aren't we all on board with how Zoom shows work right now? Why are, don't we know that there are a couple people that are unmuted, you know, and everyone else mutes, and someone works the room, makes sure that they don't uh, fuck up the audio too much, and that's that. I'm, yeah. I'm let's break it down. Let's break it yes. down. Yeah. It's very difficult to do a show to um, no audience. You know? To no audience or to too many people unmuted. Right, right, yeah. right, right. If, if you, I, mean, I, I don't have a problem with everyone having the option to unmute themselves, but someone has to police the room. Someone has to go, hey, you don't realize how loud the crackling noise of whatever the fuck you're touching is. Mm -hmm. and, how are uh, your potato chips, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Are they better than the joke you just fucking ruined? <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, that sums it up. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> I, I, nice swear, I, I have like jo new stuff that I'm working on, and I fucking cannot tell if it's good or not. I need a real audience. I need real bodies in front of me and real eyes to look at. Well, all it means is that so you're just going to have to you're just going to have to work it again. It's going to take me 3 weeks to try all the stuff that's working on Zoom to make sure it works in front of a one-on-one -on -one staring people in the face. And when's Stand that going to happen? In 3 years? Are we just going to be writing you know, I, I when's that going to happen? When do we get the chance to actually do this in front of real people that aren't sitting 10 feet from each other? Let me go Outdoor. grab my magic eight ball and shake it. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, there's trouble. But um, I do know that, like, I did a set tonight. It was I did the KO comedy tonight. Uh, Sam. Oh, yeah. Ob I, think I did that last week. Yeah, Obeyed, yeah. Obeyed, that's it. Thank you. And um, Jen Kirkman was supposed to be on that one, but she had to bail. She had a, a, a small, hopefully it's uh, nothing serious, but she had to bail. And then I did, did a thing that I sometimes do, which I volunteer to find a replacement. Oh, for her? For, for Jen Kirkman. None of my business. None of my business. Yeah. And so I literally was like, well, I, I know people who could use a set or would like a set. It's usually you or Bamford. Uh, <laughs> you're the two people that come to mind right away. <laughs> and uh, so I offered it to Maria and she said yes. And so she, um, and then we both kind of hung out and, and I, this, this is being recorded on Saturday night, unusually. And so it's been a little, uh, it's been a little fiddle and diddle trying to make all the different Zooms. And I've also spent too much time on Zoom in the last day and a half here. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow's another big day. Sunday, we've, I, I, I'm doing my Nooner show. Oh, my God. With Katie Hughes and Ron Funches. Oh, gonna fun. be doing guest sets. And then, um, and then we're doing our show. Yeah, we we're, were doing the Jackie. We didn't get to promote it, so you guys, I will have missed it, unfortunately. But right, uh, we'll we'll t we'll t we also tweet them out and stuff. And yeah, I th I think it's on my website, so I I got to remember to put them on my website. But it's that's going to be tomorrow's. I'm really looking forward to seeing. I, can you imagine? This is going to be great. 
It's going to mm-hmm. be Aida and uh, Debbie Gutierrez and um, Shalee was sharp. Yes. And Can't, Aaron Foley. And Aaron Foley. And yeah. I got to, oh, I actually did a show with Foley earlier this week. And uh, I can't wait to hear more um, just, you know, what what she's working on. Because it was her first Zoom, the one that she did with me. That she was in a comedy in five months? Right. Whoa. So I, <laughs> How was that? Well, her dad died. <laughs> and, uh, she, yeah, her dad died like a month ago, dead. two weeks ago. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And so she was trying to uh, Lori Kilmartin it. And, uh, <laughs> you know what? What, what? I, I didn't know that. So I, was she tweeting about it? I don't think she, I think she just put a Facebook post about it. It was, oh, was super okay. sad. He, he was had cancer and he fought it for uh, a while. It was terrible. And then the guy who went at right before her or right after her. And I have spaced his name. I've met him a couple of times. His sister died last week. Shit. And he tried to work some material. Comics are monsters, as I think has been established. <laughs> uh, but I know why. Wow. That's how we process shit. Shit, yeah, of course. If they ha- yeah. I mean, shit, that's rough, man. A sister. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. It's really shit. sad. But he didn't say how. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, you know, all I can say is the first couple of weeks are shaky, and then you get your comedy death sea legs under you, and you fucking start shredding those jokes. That's it. That's <laughs> good it. Good times. Just, just uh, it's good times until it isn't. Until you want to do different gigs. Remember, remember doing the road, and you're like, what I wouldn't do to have an in town week. Uh, you know? Oh my god. Just like doing one nighters, and then all of a sudden you're like, I need five shows at one club where I just, and even if I'm emceeing, even if it's just 10 or 15s, yeah. or five or six shows I need, because if I go to fucking Iowa one more time and have to <laughs> wrestle my way through a poorly set up room, there was, there was a room in Dubuque. The only redeeming quality is that I got laid twice there, but uh, you got laid twice there. Yeah. In, in 10 years. What was the name of the room, please? Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't ask for the name of the men. <laughs> I know you don't know. <laughs> you never asked. I, was, I'm that sure. That was fun, Jackie. The Jackie I never met. <laughs> and if we're lucky, you never will. <laughs> uh, I will say that... Um, that room was it was a it was either a Yoder gig or a Mueller gig, and it was it was a but it was a weekend. Wait, no, no, it was a run. It was a run, so it was like a Friday yeah. or Saturday. But yeah, it filled. Yeah. It filled. It had you know those stages that are just uh, they look like kind of like tables. They don't have a back to them, and sometimes they hang a curtain. Yeah, right. It's right, like right. a platform. Yeah, it's not a sturdy. It's not a sturdy stage. You can't do the Chaz Elsner backflip closer on a stage like that. <laughs> I've fallen off more than one. <laughs> it isn't okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So I'm just, that's what Zoom is for me. It's just like where, no, no, I'm happy to do stand-up comedy, but I would like to do other, other sets. It's I like know. everyone being excited about doing outdoor stand-up comedy now. I was like, you assholes. <laughs> hated I it would, eight months ago. I haven't uh, been asked I would do any outdoor show. I mean, yeah, you know, this is the, where I'm on week two of a four week hiatus and I'm just at home, you yep. know, yep. I, I went through, I, I'm almost done cataloging everything in my house so that I know where things are in the garage. Like, uh, wow. yeah, top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf, then move on to the next bookcase. Cause I'm always like, I can't find shit. I, where are my command strips? I know I have a thousand command strips. And I couldn't find them. So then I, w- I just decided to make a file. And also what? if I ever die, my son has, you know, like a road map to where everything is and stuff. Where the but... command strips are. What are command strips? <laughs> He's going to need them. They're, they're uh, like picture hooks you hang on the wall, but they, they're, they're Velcros so that you, you don't have to nail anything into the wall. Oh. Yeah. It's good right. for like, if you 
you know, or aren't sure if you're going to put something there, you want to test it, you know, yeah, or yeah. If you're renting and you don't want to, you know, risk yeah. not getting your deposit back. I have an air conditioner in this room right now. How yeah. exciting. Very exciting. It's tiny, but so is this room. So, is it working? Yeah. Yeah. I am cool. It's lovely. Crisp and cool. Oh, yeah. that's great. And you can't hear it very much, can you? Or No, I don't hear it. All right. That's cool. So nothing else going on in comedy this week, Jackie. Been a <laughs> week for our profession. Ah. Oh my God. Just more. Another rock has been turned over. Oh I, my uh, God. You're right. Another. Oh my God. Such a, such a gross article. Oh my God. Did such you read a it? Gross. I accidentally did. Augie Smith sent it to me. A good article about a gross person and right. a horrible thing. That and super detailed and, and, yes resonated with absolutely i i just i recognized the actions i yes. recognized 100% i was incredible the vibe i recognized and the thing is is who hasn't looked at jeff ross and god nope not inviting him over to the house right and i mean there's there's no there's nothing to say to that i mean first of all i'm irritated he invented roasting again why did he bring he that fucking he just, asshole he just brought it back he yeah. didn't invent it. He no, brought no, it back. But he, he brought it back. it back. That's yes. a great idea. He had a great idea. And I think a I lot of roasting. comics, I love it. That's because you're really it. good at it. I'm not and... great at it, but I love it. I, and I love, I love, there's no rules. There's, you find the person's vulnerability and instead of leaving it alone, you go in and you, you fucking shiv them right there. I love it. <laughs> yeah. But, that you just the defined thing. the reason why I fucking hate it. <laughs> Leave people alone. Write a fucking joke. Don't just make fun of somebody's left leg. You're no fun. You are no <laughs> fun. No fun. But here's the thing. He, he it's weird because like people were pointing out all the pedophile jokes people made about Jeff Ross. You aren't supposed to be worse than the jokes about you. Like the jokes are supposed to be a worse version of <laughs> a caricature. Never true. Right. Yeah. You yeah. can't you, you can't like you can't be worse than your the roast jokes about you. That's horrific. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's uh, a, right, and that's the thing. As all you have to do is show every roast that he was ever in, and people, you could tell that everybody could tell. Like, I mean, I never knew the guy. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've met him. You, yeah. you're a New York comic, so you saw him all the time. I bet. No, 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 I didn't see him all the time, and uh, um, I knew him a little bit, but not very much. I never hung in those circles. I was not a Boston comic, comic Truth. club comic. Mm -hmm. That place always did. I mean, it was notorious for having bad vibes, right? Oh, um, I did it I in like, 1989. I went in there. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, because I was looking for anywhere to do a... I lived in New York yeah. for about a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. And um, so I went to all the different clubs hoping that one of them had a fucking open mic. And they right. were all bringers. And I knew two people who I was living with in Jersey. And they didn't have enough money to come see me six nights a week yeah. uh, at a comedy club in New York City. So I, I did one set at the Boston Comedy Club. Uh, it was kind of a, a mic uh, in 89. And it, was, it, had that, it had that creepy vibe that the store sometimes had <laughs> when I first moved here in 97. Yeah. Well, Just rapey. Like you, something was something didn't feel right didn't feel great like i like i i when i went i was a new york comedy club girl right okay so lucian you no know, no there's, that's that's the strip right no 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 it's near comedy club and it's on 24th and second and it was you were, there were no there was no fear of like sexual violations but many health code violations and <laughs> safety code violations and a stage, one of the stages in like the little room, I think literally blocked the fire exit. So, <laughs> you know, there was, there, no, luckily nothing ever happened. We all, there was not, no fire. But I mean, there was famously a George Foreman grill right next to the cash register. And so people coming in saw, like you'd have like, someone taking money and flipping the fucking burger that you were going to, you know, even a half hour, <laughs> different hair. Like it was ridiculous. So, but I wasn't around that scene. But um, so I, I didn't really know Jeff Ross. I know him a little bit enough to say hi. And you know, he's always been nice to me. But um, sure, 
Yeah. God, well, I mean, that's right. Just, and the funny thing is, is like watching the non-response of most comedians right now, it's cracking me up because I think a lot of people, they either want to work for him or they have worked for him. You know, he broke a lot of comics on by, by putting them on the roast. Yeah. And they probably have a sense of loyalty or they genuinely like him or something. I, I, I don't know, but it's... It's just like, I don't, so I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. And I, well, my comedy's over and my career's over. So why the fuck not? <laughs> 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 my but, attitude has always been comedy is never going to be over. So I might as well fucking say whatever I want. Because I'm going <laughs> to figure out a place to do it whenever. My yeah, career I mean, has absolutely never been important to anyone, including me. So... <laughs> It, there's, you know, there's not more so than ever, however comedy is going to shake out, there's going to be different paths to success. They don't all run through Comedy Central. No, nope. They don't all run through getting on a roast. And, and you know what? Other people can hold roasts and other people, if you love that and you love yeah, that he format, doesn't own the He doesn't own the roast. He doesn't own it. He know, doesn't it, own like, Boast Rattle. He doesn't own anything. Right. Got, yeah. So there's a, there's a place for you and come... Listen, in a week, Jeffrey Ross jokes are going to be hacky. You've got and about he's six still going to work. He'll be <laughs> I don't fine. Know. I don't He'll know what. Fine. I don't know what will happen. But did you uh, hear that Louis C.K. showed up at Chappelle's show? So Chappelle is booking the C.K. at his at his gigs. He's yeah. letting him go up. Sure, sure. We just got to find her. You got to find your own path. And I mean, it's sure. You know, well, if, if, if they didn't break the law, they're not in prison. I mean, Vince Champ was not invited to Chappelle's show. He's in prison, <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, I don't know. There's still an audience for that. So, but but my favorite take on the Jeff Ross thing was like, but remember that Ellen's a bitch. That's that was one <laughs> oh of my, my favorite. Oh my god, Ellen. Yeah. Yeah. I that, think it, that... it, 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 uh, but she's not harass. Was she sexually harassing anyone? She wasn't, but her, um, one of her executive producers was, uh, like he was grabby to men and women. I think he, he either asked for a writer for a blow job or some, it was, uh, he seems like a monster, but he's on his way out, I guess. Um, again, I, I've only met Ellen a handful of times. She was nice, but I've never heard a positive thing about the working way. for Ellen. Yeah. I have absolutely never heard a positive thing about working for Ellen. Yeah. Um, but that's true of almost like, I've never heard a positive thing for working for Letterman. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But I, I just, didn't, I didn't know a lot of the guys. I knew uh, a yeah. couple of the women who worked there. Yeah. And then, um, and then I knew guys who were like, it's a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I think like, like, you know, Bill Sheft was there like 30 or whatever. I think that guy liked, I mean, I think it was case by case, but honestly, I've never, people, when you, when they, when you talk to them, their post Ellen job, they can't talk, but they have a haunted look in their eyes. <laughs> they, you know, I don't Can know. I, ever, I posted a tweet. I, I said the, the fact that so many comics are making jokes about Ellen right now proves that she didn't have enough stand up comics on her show. <laughs> and then, <laughs> right? And the opposite, that's why no one's talking about Jeffrey Ross. He put a lot of comics on his show. Yeah, he's yeah. He, he, he created, he created Nikki Glaser, right? I mean, yeah, he gave her smart. a spotlight, and she's a great comic, but I mean, because the is, thing is, is I, when the, the spotlight goes on on people, you have to produce as well. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, so yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't know. And also, I don't, I, I feel like especially people are coming against after the women comics that oh, he sure. helped. Like, oh, you uh, uh, just fucking leave them alone. They, they fucking got through a horrible situation. They, they, they found a spot in a, in a really shitty situation. It's a terrible and they, maze and they weren't they killed in it. Yes. They shone, they shined, they shone, whatever. So good for them. But it's just, uh, to me, the male comics, like fine. It's like, guys, when are you going to get angry? Like, something's got to bother you at some point you know please someone say something besides beloved ted alexandro have some and augie balls smith and, and augie smith augie and smith augie. always says oh my god it's so crazy but um with ellen you know i don't think anyone feels this any comedians feel a sense of loyalty it's almost like you know and i so i i 
someone said, oh, she never broke comics. So I said, no, she, she and Leno almost never put unknown stand-ups on. Like whenever stand-ups appeared on Ellen, they already were, they already had a show on Comedy Central. They were already- No, selected. Tracy Ashley was on there. She didn't have anything. Really? She, on Ellen? Yeah, on Ellen. Ellen. Ellen put, she put a handful of comics on. Did she do a set? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, she didn't it's, do that a lot though. Right. No, 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 and, and never... it's daytime. It's a daytime show that doesn't really that doesn't lend itself to ever having comics on, does That's it? Not, I don't. I don't. Agree Oprah didn't, that I, but I've Oprah never... never had comics on, well, Oprah's right? Not, Oprah's not a stand-up. I wouldn't expect her to have comedy on. Well, did I would expect... did, uh, did John Stewart have it at his show? Like what? She what other stand-up? Really, con- my it, question what, is. I'm trying to ask a question. Can I ask a question? Oprah, no, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm trying to say something. Okay. What do you think? Do you think I'm gonna you're gonna let me do it? Say the thing. I'm gonna say the thing, which is what are the stand up comedy run daytime shows besides Ellen? Who what stand ups are doing daytime? Right, and, and that had a lot of stand ups on that show. Were, uh, first of all, are there any besides Ellen and uh, which no. were the good ones? I don't know. I I let me let me offer my opinion having worked on a daytime show is the the executives at daytime are batshit insane and they are so afraid of offending what they think their female audience is they don't let anything get by right they're just so afraid everything's got to be soft and sweet and and i don't know what they think women are that sit that are at home that they can't you know they can't handle comedy but that's why the dancing <laughs> but, works but so, so well. So, so what I'm saying is, I, I think, I, go, what? I don't like that I'm, I'm stuck in this league where I'm defending Ellen, but I don't think that she had comics on, not because she didn't want to have comics. She might not have, she might be that person, but I also think that you're right, and she wasn't allowed to have comics on. I think she's that person. I think, uh, <laughs> okay. but I think, like, say, I don't know how many years her show's been on, like, 2003, so, like, 18-something years. I think after year six, she could say, I'm going to do whatever I want and I'm going to have comedians on. And I think you could, you could groom, you could find comics. You could definitely find clean comics and parent comics to do a four or five minute set. You just have to spend the time working the set, just like you work a set for a late night show. And I think, you know, she does a monologue up front, so they're ready for comedy. So I, I, I think them not doing it is, I, 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 you know, I can't, I can't, I, I think it's, I think it's a know. unique situation. I'm not saying I don't, again, I don't I know anybody. Opportunity. How about that? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. It's free. It's like it, you can break a comic, you get a little credit, you know, for being, they'll eight. tolerate all kinds of crazy shit later. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy segment because, you know, pretty much another person will get laughs versus you know some segment with some reality show host that might or star that might be just boring because they can't tell a story you know i, I never know i don't understand why they don't have yeah. comics on all the time like we do all the work just sh- give us a mic we've been right. doing this shit we do it all for you, you don't have to do a fucking thing it's just a real a it's a good mic. it's a good clock eater for five to seven minutes yes you just segment. you gotta you gotta awesome. fill the content yeah yeah so I don't know what's going to happen, but I mean, I, I feel bad for her staff because they're watching all this play on Twitter while they're on vacation. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> what a horrible vacation. Yeah. You know, I, I've always, I have always uh, envied Ellen because they took like the summer off. They would always take, have a huge summer break and they've just, oh, wow. I'm like, ah, oh. and I was like, oh, you got, you could work eight weeks straight on the road if you wanted to. That yeah, was you all could. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, um, Yeah. Did I ever tell you the story of when Greg Fiddler got the job writing at Leno? Do you, Greg no. Fiddler's a Minneapolis comic. You, uh, okay. he's. I thought um, that was a pseudonym. That's a real name, Greg Fiddler. Greg Fiddler. He worked on the Soup for probably oh. for, with Joel McHale for ten years after oh, after he moved here. Yeah, he really liked it. He lives in Australia now because uh, he married an Australian woman. They had a kid. Whatever. He wow. lives, I think, in Sydney. Anyway. Um, so, but he was a Minneapolis comic and he used, he did the road and he had a, one of those fax contracts with Letterman. Okay. Where, uh, 10 jokes a day before 9am 
um, Ooh, or yeah, before wait long. before noon uh, okay. Eastern time, which was okay. nine a.m. Uh, L.A. time. Yeah, uh, but he was out of Minneapolis. Whatever. Before noon Eastern time, ten jokes a day, five days a week, five hundred bucks. That was oh, the that was good money at it for a, at a time, right? Well, and this was in the mid nineties, right? And so he Not also could, he was also working the road, yeah, right. So he and he could just wake up and do it, knock them out. So he would end up writing the ten jokes that he thought Letterman would like, and then he would have extra jokes. And at this time in the mid nineties, Leno had a had would would accept jokes via fax, and he would pay per joke. Okay. And so Fiddler was faxing the jokes that he that he didn't give to Letterman. And he just okay. faxed them. And so then there was an article about him in the Star Tribune, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, where, oh, he, no. t- where he told that story. No, you can't talk about that. That's going to be silent. You can't, yes. talk, you can't tell Leno you're giving him your Letterman leftovers. Oh, my or God. Or you can't tell Letterman, who you have a contract with, that you're giving Leno other jokes that, you, that weren't good enough for him. And he didn't, he, he thought he was telling the guy in confidence. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's no. a reporter. So they oh, publish. No. And, of course, in the 90s, there's, there's internet, but it's not as much. But, you know, both Letterman and Leno had people scowl, you know, scouring all of the publications looking for their names and stuff. Letterman fired him immediately. Oh, fuck. Leno, who he had never met, called him. Oh shit! Oh no! And I wish I could do a Leno Leno impression, but I can't. But he was just like, "What were you thinking, man?" And shaking his head or whatever the Leno impression would be. He was like, "What were you thinking?" And Fiddler was like, "Clearly, uh, no, no, I was incorrect." He said, "Well, I'm going to be playing Mystic Lake Casino in rural Minnesota this weekend. Meet me out there. Maybe I can do something for you." So, wow! Fiddler goes to Mystic Lake, watches his show. Goes, talks to Leno afterwards, and Leno's like, I got a guy, he's going on a paternity leave for 16 weeks. If you want to move to Los Angeles, I, it'll get you the union, it'll get you a stake, because you'll have 16 weeks of uh, WGA Leno money, uh, but you can't have the job. That guy's coming back. I love that guy. And Fiddler's like, wow. And so this is the nicest story I know about Jay Leno, by the way. And so that's how that's how Fiddler came and moved. And then, of course, much like absolutely every everyone in the whole wide world, uh, as the 16 weeks was coming to an end, he's like, I don't know. I think he likes me. I think he'll keep me. And uh, he did not. He did not. Because uh, uh, he can't. All right. Well, there, there you go. Good for that guy. That's what that story was. But I can't believe that he just told the story. <laughs> he's, oh, my just God. Just to the newspaper. Don't do it. I mean- you do have to tell someone because that is like that is like <laughs> that's like sleeping with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Like you got to tell someone that you that you, and you, in the same day, right? <laughs> Fair enough. I agree. Hmm. Agree. Do you want to do comic of the week a little yes. early? Wait, how much? How much time have we done? Twenty-one. What? No shit. Seriously, that's it. I have twenty-eight. Interesting. Well, did good you, for me. Did we start from I when we started during the episode or the when we started? Maybe, maybe there we, was seven minutes of, of We chatted just, a bit before we started the episode. When did we start burning our careers? <laughs> Is that right a like, I believe that's 241 <laughs> episodes ago. When did we make ourselves unhireable to anybody in the business? 248 episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Math doesn't work there. Right. Um, uh, well, there was there was a charge silence right around minute fifteen. <laughs> if you want to discuss the charge silence, <laughs> I gotta turn my AC back on. Oh, it's on remote control. Oh my god! Yeah, the room's one hundred and forty-four square feet. How lazy do you gotta be? <laughs> wow. That's gross. I love it. Mm-hmm. Is it like those that big blocky AC that sticks out of your window, or is it? Yes, except for that it's tiny. Uh, actually, it's not. It's it's super little. And yeah. uh, William, he was. I walked out here to see how he was doing, and he was looking at the directions, and and he goes, "We don't know how to put it in. I don't know how to put it together." And I was like, "Oh, 
And, it, and then he just started laughing. So comedy is everywhere, Lori. <laughs> and uh, so just so you know. <laughs> did you, did you hear, did you happen to come across that clip of that Australian comic named Isaac Butterfield? No. Okay. So, so it, it was a couple, it was like maybe a day before the Jeffrey Roth thing took over our feed. But, uh, um, so he, 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 he had this joke where he made fun of the Christ. He, it was a joke about Christ Church, the mass shooting at the mosque. Oh, wow. And it was really interesting to watch because it's not a joke for everybody. And I didn't, I didn't really think it was a good joke. <laughs> but it, it, it's like he talks about, you know, like how many people were killed and they were all innocent victims. This is all in the setup. And then the punchline is something, the, the essence of the punchline is, Muslims drive paths. <laughs> I was like, wait, you put me through all this to get to that punchline? Where what do they drive? He, something like, um, he goes, I I'm bitch, I'm butchering this. Okay, you should find right, it. Fair but, enough. But uh I he he does it was funny because he did the rule of three of the things he was appalled at. And the first two were like victim oriented. And as, as, a, as an audience member, you're like, what the fuck's happening right now? <laughs> but, but you're thinking, oh, this punchline's going to go, woo, over and take me someplace because it's got to because I'm go going through a trauma just listening to him recount this fucking mass shooting. <laughs> and the punchline yeah. is I felt sorry for the people that were, that were leaving the nightclubs that night because uh, they couldn't get a cab because all the cabbies were dead, right? Oh. Something like that. So, Holy shit. I know, I know. It's like, uh, wow. I know, I know. Because I was like, is that not, is that not hacky in Australia? Like, is that a new take on Muslims in Australia? No, that's that, uh, that I, I, I gotta say globally, that's hacky and racist. I, Holy I, shit. I, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, Holy yeah. Smoke. But I was, I was like, oh, do they also have Puerto Rican stealing hubcaps jokes in Australia? Is that cutting right. edge there too? I, I was, but but wow. here's the and then, then so the audience they the audience goes oh and then they they kind of applaud right right and so it's that reaction right it's it's and I Pro hey, proving I, that audiences are the nicest people in the world uh, sometimes but it's also you know that's that's that search for the gasp laugh which I I I I've been I'm always in search of that as well so okay part of it's like I understand that that desire. I was just, I, I was disappointed in a punchline because I didn't think it was good enough, right? Yep. And, but here's the thing. Then he, like, on, on YouTube, he posted this video about how everyone's mad at him because he's being canceled, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that, <laughs> I'm like, it made me appreciate Anthony Jeselnik so much because, first of all, Jeselnik could do that exact setup and have a punchline that makes you go, well, it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> whatever it was. Whatever it was. However... Right whatever he would pick because his he knows how to he will justify the darkest setups agree medically right agree. and he doesn't make a big deal about it afterwards he doesn't he doesn't go oh i guess you guys didn't like jokes <laughs> special well fuck you you can't cancel me like he tells a joke if you don't like it fuck you he goes on to the next one he drops the special he moves on with his life he doesn't make a cottage in this is the thing that's bugging me okay the people that make a second industry or a second career of responding to the audience's critiques of their jokes just have some balls tell your joke and move on just Stand own it. it yeah you don't have to to me that's show, that to me that's a weakness that you are actually affected by criticism Right, well, right, but, but, but not in a good way. But like in a way where you're, where but you should just tell your joke and stand behind it, whether it's good or bad. Right, right. Or yeah, if it's a bad joke, just admit that it was a bad joke and it was ten years ago and you weren't a moron. Yeah, or, usually. Yes, because yeah. usually when it's a bad joke, it takes you ten years to figure it out. <laughs> That's why I'm always yes. worried. I'm like, I'm, uh, is this a joke I'm going to be apologizing for in ten years? Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully not. But I mean, that happens. That's fine. And right. maybe in 10 years, this guy will go, oh, all right, I could have done better on that one. Do you but, think that Callen, uh, Brian Callen put advertising on the front of his apology or non-apology or his denial? What? What do you mean? 
Uh, you know, uh, Brian, isn't it Brian Callen? Was that his name? The well, guy, that's one guy. The, the no, guy the, there. One of the guys that just had a problem, right? It just got... Uh, yeah. He did a, this is categorically not true. He, he made a video oh. that said that. And I was just wondering, it was, a, it was a riff in the moment where I was wondering if we put advertising <laughs> before that. Well, no. Oh, oh, because we're about to do an ad. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, because, because okay. uh, just because of the clickbait. Because then he would get money from a cottage industry of apologizing for something oh. that he insists that he didn't do. But clearly, uh, several people say that he did. Well, okay, so that's a separate thing because that's an action. I'm talking about jokes, right? I'm no, saying, I'm saying the, 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 the reaction that a lot of comics are having to criticism about a joke is to be the victim and, and, and actually increase. It's a, I, I think it's a marketing thing because it increases your fan base, you know? For a right. guy like that to go, oh, they're trying to cancel me, that appeals to people that already like you and it's going to bring more people to you. But it's... Like, I see through you, just so you know, I fucking see what you're doing. You don't give a shit that I see, and but I know what you're doing, and yeah. it's, and you know what? The master is Anthony Jeselnik, and he doesn't do that. He doesn't have to do that. And that's nope. one reason, a second reason why he's a fucking badass. Yes. He just writes another joke that you probably won't enjoy, but yeah. is incredibly well-crafted and super funny. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, comic of agree. The week? yeah, comic of the week. I just did her podcast, and she's road comic, and uh, East Coast from Jersey, and uh, her name is Mona Shike. Sh- uh, shake, shake, shake. 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 Mm-hmm. It's S H A I K H, and uh, the name of her podcast is Minority Report, and it's a live streaming thing that then she releases as a as a podcast, and so she takes comments from the people. It's two hours, which was a little, felt. It felt super long, and then I enjoyed, uh, you know, there there was a point where you're just like, oh, it's two hours, and then you enjoy the following 40 minutes of conversation as well. Is there a break at all, or is it two hours straight? Two hours straight, because it's live streaming. Okay. So I have several beverages handy. Well, that's cool, and And she's at Flappers frequently, right? Yeah, I was watching a Flappers uh, clip uh, as well, and yeah, because she lives out here now, but she's uh, at East Coast. Mona Shake. Check cool. her out. At Mona S Comedy, all one word. Mona M O N A S C and the word comedy. If you can't spell that okay. by now, you're <laughs> Mona S Comedy. Yes. Yeah. All right. You want to do this? Uh we're we're That's advertising so- a thing. Guys, I'm so excited. Somebody has found us worthy. And they want pause. Uh- wait, let's get the thing and then because worthy, and then we can go in. Okay, so so you want me to read this thing? Do whatever you want to do now. We're on we're on company time. All right, let me get my chat up. There's the intro, and then there's ad copy to pull from, and then the call to action, which is required to read. So the second message, you got to read all that verbatim. But the first one, you guys can riff on. They say try to keep it po- positive. Okay, so Jackie, do you want to riff on the first one? Okay. Together? It's well, first of all, it's function of beauty, and they and what you do is you sign up for shampoo that fits your hair that's the amazing thing about it you take a quiz they tell you what what you do with your hair you explain your hair and then they get you stuff that'll that'll fix it or make it and it smells amazing one size fits all may work for your accessories uh but when it comes to your hair uh they all need something a little different to help us look our best uh and they have it's unique hair care is what it is it's unique shampoo and conditioner it's function of beauty creates shampoo conditioner and treatments and they're they formulate them especially for you. Yeah, I loved it. Okay, so the quiz is easy. It's, don't be afraid. <laughs> it's like you pick three answers and then they come up with a, a version for you. And I have I've been using the vanilla shampoo. Uh, yep. I think it's vanilla. Um, and then I ordered um, uh, eucalyptus because that's my favorite scent. It hasn't come yet. I'm excited. But the formulas, they're vegan, they're cruelty free, they're not, they're not testing them on animals, and they use, they don't use, sorry, <laughs> sulfates, parabens, or any other harmful ingredients. That's right. That's important. Yes, um, I got the lavender and rose, uh, and it's super, it smells great, it feels great. Uh, I need, my hair tangles a lot, so I need a, heart, a, a real strong okay. conditioner. So that... 
it's function of beauty and and you yes. get a discount if you do a Jackie and Lori thing and i think it's just a function of beauty dot com slash Jackie Lori, J A C K I E L A U R I E Jackie. Lurie. We're one unit, and you get twenty percent <laughs> off. All right. And yeah, um, yeah. My dog right now is trying to get in. She heard that function of beauty is true, <laughs> and she wants in on this. She needs a bath. She wants That's part of it. Twenty for twenty percent off your first order. So if you order big. You can uh, get 20% off a larger Hang number. Hang on real quick, because I think you guys are yeah. riffing on the required stuff where you've got to read it verbatim. All right. Hold on. I'll read it verbatim, okay? Do it. <laughs> guys, I'm reading this one verbatim. Uh, here we go. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> go to functionofbeauty.com slash Jackie Lori. Take your four-part hair profile quiz and save 20% on your first order. You didn't hear me? Okay, let me repeat. <laughs> Go to functionofbeauty.com slash Jackie Lori for 20% off and let them know you heard about it on our show. Oh, you didn't hear that? <laughs> okay. That's functionofbeauty.com slash Jackie Lori. Beautiful. Okay. I think we got enough stuff there. And then I'll put an ad here. And now we're back. Yeah. Good luck cleaning that up, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. So I did. Uh, so I, I've been doing so many sets, and I told everybody that I would do different material on each of the sets this weekend because I had three different sets. And um, so the show I did tonight, the KO show, mm -hmm. I did stuff that's done. And so I'm less interested in it. Yes. Um, so right. I need to record this album quickly. Where are you? Uh, how are you going to record it? Where? What are you going to do? Don't know. Don't know. Are you going to go? How's Acme? How's Acme handling? Are they doing okay with like how many people are they having in? Has anyone got COVID from going to the shows? To, no. And I just got a text from Lewis saying that he's doing guest sets over Zoom for they're they're pushing the live show and then they're doing zoom guest sets for the zoom audience oh from, nice from around the country oh that's cool um well maybe and how many people are they having in in each in, well you, you know well? it seats 240 and i think he's doing 30 30 wow. people i i mean i my heart breaks i know how the fuck can that continue i mean it, yeah i don't it, know i don't know either but i know that that it's everyone's trying like the flapper show that we're doing tomorrow everyone's yeah. trying if we could as a country just do this for like two months straight all of this would be over and we could return to many of our normal lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as normal as a stand-up comedy life is ever going to be but right. instead but we're instead having sturgis <laughs> yes this might just this just might meander for years and years like this you know, yeah, it won't. It will not do that. It'll. Um, a lot of it depends on if our one term president, Joe Biden, is elected in November, because then he can start shoveling out the air, the, the dismantling of the government that Donald Trump has been doing uh, systematically for the last three and a half years. And he will try to recreate the government and bring it back online. And once there is a unified there has to be a unified decisions, right? There has to be a rule of law from the, from the top, right? Yeah. And we have not gotten that. And so hopefully after November, or it'll be January, I guess, because he'll spend November, December, and January if he loses, um, double timing trying to kill as many children and people as possible. I know. And sock away as much money as Pinochet on his way out of his own country. I know. Um, yeah, well, anyway, and in that cheerful note, <laughs> <laughs> did you, I, I was in the, the Washington Post did a, an article on me on Monday. It came out that Monday. Yeah. I you talked I, about I, it. I, I skimmed it. Uh, it was great. It was great. You came off I, really well. I thought I couldn't read it. Uh, it just felt, it made me jump out of my skin to see my name like that, but yeah. I did in the comments and argue with people. 
Oh, that, did you? <laughs> that's completely that, the opposite of what I do. <laughs> that told me I, I was my fault for putting my mother in a nursing facility. Yeah. So I, uh, who wow. does that? Oh, I don't know. The doctor that recommended it because she needed 24 hour care. Yeah. And I will say that how they played the victim, uh, the, the swim coach thing was perfect. He took your advice and, and, he, and he played it correctly. I thought, yeah, that was the other thing I didn't want to read. Uh, yeah. I feel like it, I'll read it, it, it later. <laughs> I just yeah. didn't want to, maybe not when everyone else is reading it or it was out. Maybe I'll read it like at Christmas sure. or something. Sure. But I got, I got nice feedback from it, so I figured it was okay. It was definitely okay. And then you did a Ted Alexandro, his podcast. Yeah. I Ted, was I, I fucking love Ted. First I of all, he's insisting he's retired from comedy. He calls himself a retired stand-up, mm -hmm. which I'm like, no, there's no way you can. But he, but also, he's got that I don't give a fuck. Like he always kind of did, but now he's he's just on his podcast calling people out left and right, and the way he talked about, you know, different scenes in comedy and uh, the ecosystems of of the certain bo sort of boyish sort of. Um, you know, that just that attitude of, of 53 year olds acting like 19 year olds, you know, or 17 year olds and how it just keeps persisting and no one grows up and how he was disgusted by it. And I was like, it felt so good to hear a guy hear that, you know, mm -hmm. like a, a respected male comic group say that. You just don't hear it that much. They always like it, it, it perfectly. I mean, I, I understand because they're my friends too. So I, I'm like always letting things slide and I'm used to letting things slide. You know, with yeah, we're used to letting things slide, and but I do, but we both know hundreds of decent male comics who aren't yes. monsters. Yeah, so many. There's so many fucking funny comics right now. You really can let go of these three in the, that have come that have been revealed to be shitty yeah. people in the last two months. And you the know? three more that are going to come out two weeks from now. <laughs> it's not that it's not hard. There's uh, yeah. there's going to be another straight guy of person of color or straight white guy or whatever uh that or gay some gay guy it's uh look at brian singer was that right yeah. anyway yeah, yeah he's the director yeah. but yeah yeah but uh yeah so i mean there's yeah yeah if if you're having sex with uh underage you're supposed to be the adult you were the adult in that equation they they're they're gonna be flattered because they're a child and you're a famous or or a working comic don't be an asshole. Be the grown-up. Yeah, I mean, teenagers famously think they're 45 years old, but it was like, hey, three years ago, you were nine. So, or, <laughs> like, or whatever. Like, exactly. exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, and they, since they think they're 40 and some of them look like they're 28, that's why the law says, well, I don't care about any of that. This girl's 15. Stay the fuck away from her. Because right. actually she's a child in her head. And just like all 15 year old girls, she wants to feel more grown up, but you're not yes. allowed to make her feel more grown up. Right. And if you're what you're going to do is tamper with her psyche for the rest of her fucking life. On purpose. And you're, and you're 33. So you're the grown, you're the adult in that equation. And if you want, you don't want her to wear makeup because you want her to look 14 or 13. You're fucking creep factor 11 and you should be buried head first in the sand so and have your feet painted with honey and ants could be released because you're a gross <laughs> piece of shit. Also, did, did you read the article, right? Yeah. About Ross? Okay. There was, uh, <laughs> you're mad that you read it. So mad that I read it. He was taking Polaroids, which believe there's nothing sleazier than Polaroids. <laughs> Because that's film that you don't take to be developed, all right? That, that right. is your private stash. Anyone who's got Polaroids, you don't even want to see them, trust me. If your dad if has you Polaroids, bought... burn them and don't look. Who's, they, they should, they, there should be like a three-day waiting period on buying a Polaroid camera. Um, <laughs> did, you, did you read the Judy Art Gold article? That's the last thing I read. Her about... opinion piece in the New York Times about... Uh, Shane, what's his face in SNL? Gillis. Yeah. Uh, isn't that like, that was a couple years ago, right? No, no. The Shane thing feels like it was that a couple was years ago. last year. But it was last year. So, but. Um, wasn't her op-ed? But I thought her op-ed was new. Someone just sent it to me. So maybe it was. It's from when it happened. 
Oh, is it from yeah. eight months ago as well? Oh, I'm just catching up on my scandals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so she sorry. She the book out right now. She just oh, wrote. maybe. Maybe that's so why. Does, yes, and so does her friend Sarah Schaefer. That's right, Sarah Schaefer. Uh, and, and she got picked as, uh, 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 yeah, a memoir. It got picked well. You yeah, should write a it. book. You should write a book in the next two weeks. <laughs> sure. You got the free time. Yeah. But you're organizing your shelving. I get that. Uh, yeah, but it feels good to know where things are. Like I never know the flashlights are, but now I've got a drawer and I, there, it's been logged in my Evernote. Of, <laughs> first drawer on the left of that bureau, that's where the flashlights are. So when it's pitch black, I know I just need to go to that drawer instead of like <laughs> rummaging around for things, you know? Right, right. We have, we have uh, flashlights too many places sitting around. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've, we've ordered a table for this room. Right now I'm on a card table. And a folding chair. And Where'd I'm you hoping. Get uh, Andy bought it from, I don't know, I think QAnon suggested Wayfair. I forget where. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uncertain. I don't know where he got it, but it was cheap. And we paid the extra 40 bucks for the person who delivers it to put it together. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Money is no object. We had $40. So. <laughs> I'm excited. I yeah. thank you for the recommendation on getting an SBA loan. I did. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Uh, and I talked to my accountant. It's no interest and no payments for a year. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a 30 year. <laughs> a then 30 it's a 30 year at 3.75%. So I'd rather have the cash and know that I have it just in case. And in case I got to run. Yeah, I have a I have a passport to Luxembourg, and I will be taking it uh, in August of next year. Maybe do it, do it. Why not? Uh, I, I I've been watching the National Geographic National Parks uh, series. It's mm -hmm. all the different national, or I think it's only actually eleven national parks, and I don't know how many there are. But uh, I saw the Antarctic one, and there were polar bears. I thought of you. Ah, uh, and thank uh, you. the uh, <laughs> but it was. So gorgeous. And the weird thing is, this is, uh, yeah, we got time to kill. So let me tell you, I bought a new phone because my phone, I, you know, I have to do all my banking on my phone mobile deposits. Jack, you my... don't have to justify to me why you bought a new iPhone. It's a, <laughs> whatever reason you come up with in your head is fine. Well, the camera broke and I couldn't, it was all know, shaky. Yeah. So you've got a bank. I get it. I have a banking account, and I went from the <laughs> 6S Plus to the 11 Max Pro. Oh, my and God. And so it is the, – the, I, wa I, I was watching the, na the, the National Park thing on the television, which we, I got as a uh, – it would have been 16 years ago. Yeah. And then I, but it loads here before I throw it to the Chromecast, and the image is better on my phone. The camera oh. is better than our television. Yeah. Because the television's 15 years old. The phone is, it was so gorgeous. I need to go to, was what I'm saying is I need to go to Antarctica. Does your, I think you need to go to Best Buy. Um, <laughs> First television. stop, Best Buy. Andy would prefer since they showed the mosquito migration in Antarctica. Yeah. And there's billions of them. And Andy said, I'm never going there. Because there's um, billions of, of mosquitoes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to do another break? Because I think now's the time. Oh, we're cool on the breaks. Like, I think... Uh, We've done two already? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll one? insert them when there's a nice pause. Oh, nice. It'll I think like that was a nice magic. pause. Yeah. When <laughs> you mentioned millions of mosquitoes, I was just uh, a little overwhelmed with that imagery. And I didn't know... Billions. Billions, billions. billions with a B. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. So I have... Um, I'm supposed to... I'm, I'm headlining flappers, I think, in two weeks oh, on a we Saturday. Oh, we no, we both are. I'm headlining on the 15th, and you're headlining on the a other night, right? Okay. Like the, the 16th? Like, are they back-to-back? -back? Friday, I'm doing Saturday. Okay. Not awesome. That, but when this drops, that'll be this weekend. So oh, wow. So I'm headlining this Saturday at Flappers. It's uh, August 15th, and, and I'm going to do, like, 45 minutes. Uh, some of it will be new, and some of it will be some older stuff. But that's <laughs> Believe me, that shit's better written than the new shit, so you'll be grateful for it. <laughs> you so mix please, it up nice. Please look out for that. I'll I'll tweet about it and stuff like that. But please show up if you can. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing, and then I'm I'm headlining 
doing 45 as well. So super fun. Mm -hmm. So there will be some stand up to look forward to, which is good. Um, <gasps> I don't know. I'm also doing like nine other people's podcasts. It's a, it's a, it's a free for all now. Everyone's just like, Hey, can I, I know you're home. Do you have an hour and a half? Yeah. Too many pod. It's, it's, it, standing being in front of the computer is uh it's too much it's yeah it's not good i'm doing a lot of mugging now too in, in the stand-ups where i'm just <laughs> i i have a physical bit where i literally go off out of camera i was just <laughs> oh I, man I, it is uh just okay and uh it hurts my soul <laughs> to think i'm doing it we, it's, my uh, son and i finished this anime called death note yeah Oh my God, it's so dark. Yeah. I yeah. wish you, we were more into anime, Jackie. I know, or into darkness. Because <laughs> you, the stuff you, wa did, you did you watch The Watchmen yet? No, I haven't watched The Watchmen. You um, should, you, if you, yeah. you kids like the, like the darkness. And yeah. it ends, it, it, it actually is. It has a happy ending. Yeah, does to it? some extent. Yeah, it actually I does. It, I think I watched two episodes and it was pretty grim. Well, the first episode is the grimmest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, it is uh, Hamburger Land grim. It is, uh, I said grimace, which made me go to. Uh, oh my God. I like I know. Wow. Yeah, you what the heck. You need to rest, honestly. You just need, <laughs> you need a week off of comedy because uh, you're pretty short circuit. Oh my gosh. A friend came over yesterday and brought her son. And we distant like visited, right? Like she came yeah. over for some tomatoes. Like we've got we've got veg coming out of our ears. Oh, thank uh, you for the tomatoes. They're adorable. Yeah, that that was my mother in law's neighbor. He's grown thousands of grape and cherry tomatoes. Oh my god. And so that's why I gave you hundreds of cherry and grape tomatoes. Why does uh, he grow grapes? Why does nobody grow grapes? Why does everyone grow tomatoes? Do you want grapes? When we go up this week, uh, we were passing grapevines and the, and the fruit stands have grapes. Well, I mean, no, you don't have to, I, I'm, no, you don't have okay. to buy grapes for me. I can get them myself. Okay. That was just a complaint. Lori wants people home vineyarding. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we have, we have a grapevine that often gives us a couple of bunches of grapes and that I grew, I grew them in the opinion that I was going to uh, blanch them and make Sarma, make Dolmades, uh, Armenian food. And I've absolutely never done that. Not once. <laughs> nope. It's a beautiful grapevine. I, um, my mother, uh, she had a recipe that she got out of the Contra Costa Times that I, that she, it's one of those things where she cut the, cut it out of the newspaper, taped it to an index card and put it in her kitchen. Yeah. And we still have the index card and it's just, it's gr just completely, you know, it's all falling apart. And I tweeted about it. Like when my mom was dying, I tweeted the recipe and some people have made the cookies are so good. Oh, wow. So I, I wrote the recipe on a card and put it on my, um, uh, taped it onto my cabinet in the hopes that uh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> that that you will make those cookies one day. Yes, <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. because sometimes the step of having to find the recipe, um, I would say almost all the time, makes me go, "Oh, I don't even want to try," and I'll just <laughs> make toast. But now that it's written on my kitchen cabinet, I I really can't avoid it. You could do it. You know that what we made tonight for dinner was. Uh, the other thing my mother-in-law's neighbor gave us was two bags of okra, a bunch of green peppers, some uh, Armenian cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, all this, all this stuff, right? And so I, and I had bought a fennel bulb. So what we'd made was scallops with, uh, with, a, with a sort of a stir fry, you know, carrots and, and onion and okra, and then fennel and... Um, scallops something okay. and probably something else god knows what but it was delicious but i bought a bag of frozen scallops because my neighbor brought over a weird dish of food that they're they're very nice people from thailand and mm -hmm. whenever we give them vegetables i think you mean thailand thailand thanks, <laughs> thanks folks wow somebody really needs to, to be in front of real people doing this <laughs> as well Ew. this this podcast has now turned into us doing word play <laughs> pardon me <laughs> while i leave screen <laughs> anyway so i bought a, a frozen bag of scallops and so it was delicious but uh it was a little labor intensive mm -hmm. but again i have the time 
How much time do we have, by the I way? I think we're pretty much good. Are you reading anything good? Are you reading oh, anything? Oh, yes, I am. I, I'm almost done with this book called Things Fall Apart. Mm. Oh, I've heard of that. It's really good. It was like written in the 50s or 60s. It's about, um, it takes place in an unknown country in Africa, at least it's not known in the book, because it's from the point of view of the residents who didn't name their country what what Britain would ultimately name it or something, right? Mm -hmm. and so you, the first half is just getting a sense of their life, like you see what their life is like, and then the second half, missionaries, white missionaries, British white missionaries, and, Another, it, and it starts to like, you're like, oh no. <laughs> is this sort of historical fiction? Yeah, it's okay. really good though. It's really yeah. good because it's from the point of view of the Africans. Yeah. Uh, very good book. And then uh, uh, recommend it by like when all the, the Black Lives Matter stuff was going on and people were throwing books around. And Yasser Lester said, this is actually the only book you need to read. Okay. So, so I mean, it's not. Right, uh, <laughs> right. If you skim but, white fragility and know that it's a little, uh, you know, the reviews of it I've heard have been both good and are you kidding me? So. Well, it's the other thing about white fragility and again, yeah, I'm so dense. I just, does, this shit doesn't occur to me. It was written by a white woman. So now who's benefiting from racism, but a, uh, a white female author when, you know, oh, I don't know, a million black authors have maybe mentioned it. Have you, so, did you ever read Bartunde uh, Thurston's How to no, Be Black? Huh. No, huh? Was it good? It, yeah, when it came out and uh, it literally peeled the onion back on my own racism. It was oh, one of the first yeah. things that woke me up in the last 10 comedy? years. Is he a comic? He's a comic, He's a comic, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, so it's, is it a memoir? Yes. Yes, and so, yeah, but, uh, it's, it is a memoir, and parts of it are just memoir, and parts of it are, hey, don't do this. Oh, and, okay. uh, and it's really funny, it's super smart, and it's uh, really poignant, it's about him and his mom and stuff, and it's, it's, it's great. You would love it, actually. Cool. I just got cast by Isabel Wilkinson, it's right over there on my table, and um, I've only just read great reviews about it amazing like it's oprah's book of the month but it's okay. it's about it's not fiction it's about it's about how we we live in a caste system and it's and that's all i know did you know that uh <laughs> that brianna taylor like yeah what did you know that brianna taylor is going to be on the cover of oprah the, next week for the first time ever not oprah? It. oprah bought like a bunch of billboards in louisville with her picture mm -hmm. on it too that's great so yeah i mean I, hopefully hopefully they'll be arrested, you know? Mm -hmm. The more you read about that case, the more revolting it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she I'm was not... alive after they shot her and they didn't do anything to help. They didn't call a paramedics. They didn't call anybody. They just let it. It's so disgusting. They let her die. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it makes, it makes me, it literally makes me think that there's a conspiracy. And then I'm like, hey, what are you going to do about it even if there is one? You gotta, you gotta fix the thing in front of you, Cation. Yeah. I can't fix a, a global, if there's some sort of crazy ass conspiracy, I can't fix it at a global level, it turns out. No, but you did fix your air conditioning this week, so that was important. I did. And now, <laughs> I'm gonna go watch something on television, light. What are you watching? Uh, I've been watching the, the National Parks thing, and I've also been watching um, this, Australian uh, murder mystery thing, uh, murder doctor thing that's d d good, set in the 50s, and I can't remember the name of it. So, uh, great. But I'm almost done with, with my nonfiction book, which is uh, the memoir of Marjorie Post. Oh! Yeah, the cool. woman who, who created General Foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, not. I'm not, I, I, I don't read nonfiction very quickly. I've gone through several, uh, I've gone through at least six nonfiction books in the last two weeks. I feel like uh, every day is nonfiction, and I really, <laughs> really need some fiction. <laughs> Agree. Agree. So I think we're, we're over an hour. Oh, definitely. Yes. 